When you get an email with the subject line, work issues, and it starts with, just to let you know that I've had a series of unplanned things come up work-wise, you know you're not going to get more time to make someone a faster cyclist. It's a scenario many of us face. Life gets in the way of training. But what if I told you that even with less time, you could actually turn that into an advantage? Sounds unlikely, right? Well, that's where a smart taper can be the key to unlocking some surprising performance gains. For over a decade, I've been helping cyclists from Joes to pros peak their performance using science backed training. These methods aren't just theory. They're what serious cyclists rely on to perform when it counts most. And today, I'm going to share how one cyclist, despite a super tight schedule, managed to achieve their best results ever, all thanks to a smart taper. And by the end of this video, you'll see exactly how you can apply it too. This particular cyclist is no stranger to tight schedules. Competing at master's national level, balancing work travel and managing the unexpected like work obligations. But this time the schedule was even tighter and when they came to me with a smaller window than usual to prepare for a big race, we had to act fast and implement a quick effective taper solution. To understand the effectiveness of this taper strategy, it's important to understand how endurance athletes traditionally peak for an event. Normally, athletes that follow a periodized plan will continue with their training until four or five weeks out from their main event and then start to introduce an overload phase followed by a taper where they reduce their training volume and recover and hit peak performance. This taper period, which can last three days to three weeks, has many possible options, but also has a few science-informed best practices, such as... Lower your total training by about 30 to 40% during the final days before the race. Keep your usual schedule and don't skip days on the bike. Avoid non-specific training, like strength exercises in the week before race day. Cut back on the length of rides and keep them low intensity. Do one, two high intensity interval sessions before event day. While traditional tapering has its guidelines, the beauty of sports science is that these guidelines are flexible. By testing and refining what works best in each situation, you can achieve peak performance on your terms. But this is the ideal setup. What if, like our cyclist, you only had 12 days instead of 14? Or what if you had three? That's where you need to rethink the traditional taper and find a way to make a shorter window work. Not uncommon at all levels. In a study on elite athletes, researchers found that they didn't significantly reduce their training volume in the two weeks before a key race due to a packed competition schedule. We had to work with a shorter window, seven days of overload, followed by just five days of tapering. We followed a similar structured plan as Ronsted in 2016, which I'll cover in just a moment. But in this case study that helped an elite mountain biker improve their performance metrics significantly, so VO2 max and max power output increased by 3 to 7% during a five day taper, and more surprisingly, they reduced the total training volume by 78%. If there's one key takeaway from this video, it's this don't be afraid to challenge conventional wisdom. Feel free to break the rules, especially when you're carefully measuring the results and finding what works best for you. But what difference did this really make? Let's look at our cyclist baseline performance metrics before I go over their overload phase. These are the three metrics we measured. So exactly what sessions did we do? Let's dive into the specific strategies we used during their overload phase. The overload phase was short but intense and we focused on high intensity interval training sessions. Based on the research by Ronestat in 2014, 2016 and now 2024, we used the infamous 30-15 intervals, completing them just like Ronestat lays out. So three sets of nine and a half minutes of 30 seconds with 15 seconds of recovery separated by three minutes of full recovery between sets at 50% of the power produced during the work intervals. The aim of these intervals is to maximize time spent at or above 90% of VO2 max, a strategy recently confirmed to improve VO2 max. A 2024 study by Ernstad and colleagues found that the 3015 intervals elicit the greatest time spent at or above 90% of VO2 max. When comparing the six by eight minute sessions to the 3015s, the constant power of six by eight or the 60-60 intervals weren't as good as the 3015s and they were close to 30 and 20% more at 90% or above VO2 max 
We did three sessions across the seven day period and on non-hit days, we stuck to low intensity riding lasting one to one and a half hours to allow for recovery. But the overload is only part of the equation. Could this approach work for anyone on a tight schedule? Well, the real magic happened during the taper. And here's why this short five day taper worked so well. With just five days to taper, we couldn't waste any time. So we slashed training volume with a step taper, where you take the training load down to a much lower level than you have been working at in one quick step, and then maintain that lower level for the period of the taper. I went with an approx 50% step reduction, reducing volume and intensity based on his average training week from the past few months as a baseline. And this is the same approach shown by Olympic athletes in another tapering study, cutting volume by up to 90% before major competitions. By analyzing past performances, we pinpointed when they felt strongest, and we used this data to guide the final outcome of the taper. This drop in intensity meant that we just did low intensity rides across the five days. I did add a pre-race intensity ride though. By the end of the taper, the athlete reported that their legs felt incredible, leading to the biggest win of the season, a full two and a half minutes ahead of their competitors. But how much did their other metrics improve? After the taper phase, we saw significant improvements like this. Now, a 21% increase in threshold might seem a bit unbelievable, but my take is that it was likely that it was underreported or undermodeled before this point, though there were real gains in performance still. But these really are massive gains, especially considering the time crunch and just a glimpse of what's possible with strategic training. These gains were made possible with this taper approach in this case, but it's crucial to keep experimenting and adjusting so that your taper reflects what makes you feel strongest. Imagine applying this level of precision to your entire season by carefully planning each phase of your training from base building to peak performance, you could potentially unlock even greater improvements across all of your metrics. In fact, the success of this short taper isn't just about what we did in the last few days. It's part of a bigger strategy that starts long before race week. Annual training strategies are the key to consistently achieving these kinds of results throughout the year. And that's exactly what we're going to explore next how to create a comprehensive annual training plan that allows for you to set up your training to focus on the right things, whether you're targeting one big race or a full season of events. Learn that in this next video.